it is a continuing reality, and we tap into it every sacred mass, every sacred liturgy that we, uh, that we celebrate. This reality we have, to under, we have to place within the context of we being the body of Christ. Those who are baptized into Christ become part of his body. Now, we have to, we have to accept the fact in the, uh, with, as being part of the mystical body of Christ that we're going to be persecuted. Every body follows its head. It has to. If your head goes somewhere, if it says it goes, it's, your body's going to follow. I don't care. Unless you have epilepsy or, or some, you know, degenerative disease of some sort. And still, you know, your, your body is going to do what the, the head says. Now, Christ is the head. We are the body of the church. St. Paul says that one, we are one body animated by one spirit. And that spirit, of course, is the Holy Spirit. He is the form and life of the church itself. If Christ is crucified and suffers for the sins and salvation of the world, we, as an extension of Christ, as his body, are going to suffer persecution for the sake of salvation. Now, the, the theological question here I'll, I'll end with here is that, of course, you know, some Protestants are listening to this and say, well, St. Paul may not have uh, known what he's talking about by saying that, you know, I, I make up in my body what is lacking in the sufferings of Christ on the cross. Christ reconciles humanity. Our sacrifices help or prompt God's grace so that we may walk through that door that Christ opened to heaven. So we need to continue to act like his body, suffer and sacrifice, and rejoice while doing it. Yeah, I think it's, yeah. it's that, that's, a, that's one of those very difficult yeah. passages of Scripture, that idea of, you know, I make up in my body what was lacking in Christ because, of course, Christ's suffering is complete and perfect. Right. Um, I think that that links really nicely to the idea of the Catholic response to persecution. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's, it's the joke. It's, you know, how do you know if you're Catholic? Well, you know, you, uh, you break a leg, you lose your job, your house burns down, you're hit by a tornado, uh, your dog runs away with the, the milkman, uh, and your response is, let's offer it up. <laughs> but to be honest with you, the, the issue, and it's ha ha, you're a Catholic story, so let's offer it up. But that is the Catholic true. response. Because what yeah. we should be doing is, is we should be, that certainly yes, Christ's uh, sacrifice is complete, is perfect, is sufficient for mm. the redemption of all human beings and the redemption of the entire universe. But we should offer up our sacrifices and our sufferings, even the very minor ones, yeah. we should offer those up in order to unite ourselves with the head of the mystical yeah. body. But what is else is the Catholic response to persecution? I think there needs to be some sort of realistic understanding. So let's go back a number of years to a quote uh, from uh, 1969 on a German radio broadcast. It was uh, then, he was Joseph Ratzinger. Um, now, of course, we know him as uh, Pope Benedict. And he said, from the crisis of today, the church of tomorrow will emerge, a church that has lost much. She will become small, will have to start afresh, more or less from the beginning. She will no longer be able to inhabit many of the edifices she built in prosperity. As the number of her adherents diminishes, so it will lose many of her social privileges.